Hey guys, it's Michael with PocketNow.com. This is a big week for Samsung in the United States. They've announced their Galaxy S3 phone for all four major nationwide carriers, as well as a fifth, U.S. Cellular. Now, that's a big deal. The Galaxy S3 is essentially identical across all of the U.S. carriers, but it differs significantly from the international version released a few weeks ago, as far as specs under the hood go. Now, I've got the international version of the Galaxy S3 here, and I've also got a Sprint-branded version right here. We're going to do some app launch comparisons, some benchmarks, and other speed tests, and see how these devices stack up speed-wise. we got a lot to do. It's Michael. It's Pocket Now. Here we go. Okay, so I mentioned some spec differences between these models. Let's see what they are. Now, the international version of the Galaxy S3 is powered by an Exynos 4212 quad-core Cortex-A9 processor clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, backed up by one gig of RAM. The radio is Pentaban GSM. The storage options are available from 16 to 64 gigs and micro SD expansion up to an additional 64 gigs. The Sprint version like all the U.S. variants, is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 dual-core CPU clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. That's a dual-core processor, but it allows the Sprint version to incorporate support for LTE, and it's made with the 28 nanometer process, as opposed to the Exynos 32 nanometer. And it's backed up by double the RAM, 2 gigs in all the U.S. versions, as opposed to 1. For storage, there are 16 or 32 gig variants with the same expandable micro SD card slot. For all those changes under the hood, though, as you can see, these are very similar, almost identical devices physically. Both are running Android 4.0.4 with the TouchWiz 5 Nature UX skin in the out-of-box configuration. And because it's so hard to tell them apart, I'll keep the Sprint one here on the right for the duration of the video. Okay, well, let's start the test battery. Let's go for a boot-up time check. So both of these devices are on the same page. The international version was given a hard reset and I installed only the apps we're going to be testing today. The Sprint version was new out of the box just a few days ago and I did the same on it. So aside from setting up the bare minimum of accounts and home screen shortcuts, these are very close to an out of box condition. Here we go then. One, two, three. So already we can see the differences here. The GTI 9300 is displayed on the international version, and the international version has quite a head start. Now we have the Sprint carrier specific animation here for GLTE called out. Dual Samsung banners. Sorry about the screen reflection on this one here. And already we're up on the international one. You can unlock the screen and we are ready to go. We have a network connection and everything. There we go. Now the Sprint one is finally caught up. So we're talking about a difference there. Really, we're only talking two or three seconds, I think, is what that felt like. But just in case you are constantly turning on or off your device, that could matter a lot or a little, depending on you. Now, let's move on to app launching and see how these devices fare launching various stock applications. So as you can see, just to be sure we're on the same page here, these devices are running with zero open apps, and they're both connected to the same Wi-Fi network in the office here. So one of the first things we do out of the box, especially if you're migrating from a previous Google device, is to re-download all your apps from the market. So let's try a test launch of the Google Play Store. Here we go. One, two, three. Very quick load on each one, almost identical as far as that goes. So that's nice. Then let's move on to email, which I have set up with my PocketNow email address. One, two, three, boom. And we have this first use dialog telling us how to double tap to get to the top of the list. Once again, that was pretty instant on each device. Let's try messaging. Boom. I have no messages because I use Google Voice, but those apps launched right away. Let's try maps. One, two, three. The international version for some reason has us over in Ireland, but then we do a little location check there. Another location thing here. And that's great. And the camera, one of the most important things that you want to be able to launch quickly. One, two, three, boom. 
viewfinder is up identical time on each. And they've both got no focus because they're face down, but that focus happened instantaneously. No difference. Let's go into the browser. One of the things you're going to be spending a lot of time in unless you use the third party browser. One, two, three, boom. Okay, now I was doing some testing before, so these have loaded the last page that was up, but we're gonna hop on into bookmarks here, and we're gonna see if we can load the desktop version of pocketnow.com, if we can find it, there it is. One, two, three. As I said before, these are connected to the same network, so theoretically, they should be experiencing the same speed. Very, very, very quick on each, and we have that ad loaded finally there. Not too shabby on each device. Let's do a little bit of zooming in action here, zooming in simultaneously, pinch to zoom. Almost a one-to-one -one ratio there. You can see the both the international version and the sprint version need time to re-render the page at the larger view, but I can determine no difference. Performance scrolling is great. We're gonna try and uh, sorry. We're gonna try and tap a link here at the same time to see a new page load. Let's go in and read this story by Stephen Chang. One, two, three, boom. Pages load once again. Now the international version was about a second ahead that time, but really, unless you are really pressed for time, I'm talking sub-second time levels. These are very, very similar as far as performance in the browser goes. Let's try to load another page. I tend to like nasa.gov because it is heavy with media and space type stuff that I like. One, two, three, boom. And this is the NASA homepage, not the mobile site, so it should take a second to render. Once again, the international version just slightly ahead there by a sub-second amount, once again. Pinch to scroll, pinch to zoom rather. Re-render, get way in here. Once again, no discernible performance difference to my eye. Of course, if stock apps were the whole story, we'd all still be using dumb phones. What about third-party applications? Let's test a few. Okay, so for third-party apps, we're just gonna load a few here. Let's go for Flipboard, very, very pretty app made its Android debut on this device, now is available on most Android devices. Responsiveness is nice. Launch time, unsurprisingly, is identical. Let's hop into Facebook. Facebook splash screen. International version just about a second ahead, so that's a trend that's starting to develop a little bit, except it didn't load that image quite as quickly, so. Inconsistent, but we're only talking a second or two. Twitter, boom. Twitter feed loads, there it is. Some new people have followed me, that's always nice to see. And let's try Google Plus, if you use it. One, two, three, boom. Google Plus loads, and that time the Sprint version beat it. So it's inconsistent, the international version doesn't always lead, despite its beefier processor. And let's hop into YouTube. Now for YouTube, we wanna see how these manage video. We don't really care about load time, we, we just wanna see if there's any difference in how these devices buffer and play the same video. We'll hop into the Pocket Now account, hop on into here. I'm gonna tap and at the same time, one, two, three, boom. So the same thing kind of always happens when a new phone So, so the, the international version, all right, we're gonna turn me down because I just talk a lot. This is after the Buzz episode three. If you haven't watched it, you should, it's awesome. Um, yeah, no, I mean, there was a very, very, very slight time difference between these two devices, but once again, nothing to write home about. And speaking of video, while we're here, we might as well test one of the more processor-intensive special features of the Galaxy S3, pop-up play. This is a 1280 by 720 WMV file from NASA.gov called Dynamic Earth. Let's see if we can play that on each here. And we'll enable pop-up play on each. And we can kind of drag that around. And there we go. This is this is good. Now, there would be sound playing on this normally. 
performance on each of these devices is essentially unaltered with pop-up play active in the foreground here. Not that you would be doing a lot of intensive browsing or texting while you're in pop-up play mode, but theoretically you could do almost anything on the device except maybe watch another video, which might be a fun check, but which we are not going to do today. Now, as we've mentioned before, these devices have very different configurations as far as hardware goes with the processor and the RAM. So let's run some benchmarks and see what we get. Okay, so let's hop on over to benchmarks here. The first benchmark test we're gonna run is Quadrant Standard. And we will run them three, two, one with a full benchmark, boom. Okay, so on Quadrant, on the left here in the international version, we're looking at 53.85. I'll show you that result right there. Pretty similar to the result of the first time we ran this down in New York City. And on the Sprint version on the right here, we're sitting at 5.059. Okay, so that's Quadrant. Let's go ahead and run SmartBench. Okay, so the Sprint version finished very quickly compared to the international version. Let's see what these scores are all about. Okay, if we can see, we'll do international version first. We're sitting at, God, that's really, really difficult to read. 39.16 and 16.12 is the stock ROM score. Yes, that is 39.16. On the Sprint version here, we're sitting at 2822. Just confirm that. And one of the big reasons to buy a top of the line, fancy, spec loaded smartphone these days is for gaming. So let's run a game and see how they compare. So I like flight simulator games on Android, and the graphically intense flight simulator I chose for this one was X Plane. So let's load it. One, two, three, boom. Once again, international on the left, sprint version on the right. Sprint version has the splash screen up first, but I'm thinking that the international version is going to be ready to play first. This is a landscape game. Yes, there we go. We're past the title screen. Oh, no. Wow. All right. Uh, even though the sequence was out of order on these guys, they loaded effectively identically. Let's play with the international one first. Make sure the volume's up so we get some great jet noise. Throttle. Bring the flaps down to half. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no reason to go off the runway already. Performance is buttery smooth on the control interfaces themselves. Let's get some camera angles here. Mm, did not mean to use the map. Stay in the cockpit, please. Running out of runway here, so I'm hoping I'll be able to take off soon. And there's our liftoff. Let's get another camera angle here. There we go. Performance, very, very, very smooth. Even if you are an amateur pilot like me, I haven't used X-Plane a whole lot. Let's see if I can get back into the cockpit here before I end up doing something. Excellent graphic performance in X-Plane. And, uh, oh no, flaming death. All right, so that's how we do internationally. Let's go ahead and take off on the sprint version here. Max throttle, make sure our volume is up. There we go. Let's bring the flaps down. Same basic idea. No difference so far of any kind that I can tell. Rudder controls here, good. 
do a view change. Around there, let's see if we can rotate. And we can, good. Again, here's our other view. Once again, buttery smooth, absolutely no discernible difference between the quad core and the dual core devices to my eye. And uh, I have played this once or twice. Ah, Flaming Death. I have played this once or twice on both devices uh, for longer periods, and they both do perform right about on par. Right in line with what we've been seeing pretty much this whole time. The devices are very, very close to one another as far as performance goes. Finally, we want to do a speed test. Now, we're on the same network here, so we won't run the test at the same time so as not to corrupt these results. So these should be similar. Does this really mean anything? Probably not. But this is one of our geekier videos where we go into extreme detail, so if these are valuable to you, we want to include them. Good, speed test complete there. We'll begin it on this one. In the meantime, here are my internet speeds in Boston, if any of you are interested. Not too shabby on this Wi-Fi network, and here it is on this other device. So, 36 down, 33 down on the Sprint device. Upload is 17 up here. Upload is 19 up here. So, comparable results, no big surprise, because it is the same network. So, there are significant differences between these two models under the hood, but as we've seen today, there's really very little difference in real-world use between these two phones, unless you're doing some very processor-intensive stuff. This has been Michael with PocketNow.com. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. If you've got something to say, leave a comment on the post at PocketNow.com. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do that at PocketNowTweets. I'm also on Twitter at Captain Two Phones. That's Captain the number two phones. And stay tuned. We've got a lot more coverage on the Galaxy S3 and its international and U.S. variants coming down the pipe in the next few days and weeks. Till then, once again, I'm Michael. It's PocketNow.com. Thanks for watching.